Dr. Boyce Watkins. What's happening, black people? I am uh, super excited to be here in, uh, in Zamunda, Wakanda. <laughs> this is, there you go, the real Wakanda. This was not built by Disney. You know, this was built by, built by black people. I mean, tell me, you, you can't help but to be extremely proud of what you're seeing today. Um, I am uh, I'm impressed, I'm excited. You know, I, I feel better. Being here heightens my self-esteem. Uh, being around, you know, just so many people that, uh, that believe in the future. See, we as, uh, as, as black people, we're not actually doing anything that's all that new. We're just doing what we're used to doing. You know, this is the way we're supposed to be. This is our natural state of existence. You know, this is, uh, this is a special time. This is history. And this is our opportunity to do all the things that we're gonna brag about when we're all old and gray and gathering in the same spot 40 years from now. Remember back when we were young and fly and sharp and everything else and, and we're gonna be like, see all these billions that's out here, young people, we, we built all of this. We did all of this and it started back in 2018, back a long time ago. So let me, uh, let me be really quick and say that, uh, it, it kind of give you some honest context in terms of why uh, I was very happy to be invited to come out here and speak. I'll be speaking tomorrow as well. Uh, let me just say this. Uh, I remember when I first met Jay, and uh, I, was, I remember talking to him when I was in the car, and uh, you know, someone had mentioned, yeah, there's a guy named Jay Morrison, and he'd like to chop it up with you. And I said, okay, sure, let's talk. And from the very minute that we started talking, I could tell that his energy was very good energy. You know, he was a guy that seemed uh, more interested in building bridges than in comparing, you know, the, the, the size of what I got versus what you got. You know, it wasn't none of that. It was more like, okay, King. You know, he called me King. I, I love that. And he immediately started talking about uh, ways that we could respect and support each other. And I, and I love that because we all know that when black men come together and form teams, we become the greatest teams on the earth. It doesn't just happen on the football field and the basketball court, it happens anywhere that we work together. And of course, uh, when I met Ernestine, I was extremely impressed as well. I met, I met you at the All Black National Convention and Jay uh, introduced me and she went on stage and tore it up. And uh, so when I see those two together, I see just something so special. Uh, their grandchildren are already proud of them they're not, not even here yet, but your grandbabies are already living good off of the things that you're doing right now. And so uh, later on, uh, Jay called me again when we were, um, I was in, every now and then we would talk maybe about once every month or two. And I was in Guyana and I was sitting on the porch and it was hot and, you know, mosquitoes and stuff. And, but I took the call because I, I, I just know a king when I see one. Like when I, when I talked to Jay, I, I had the same feeling I had when... Uh, I first heard about people like Barack Obama and others who have done extraordinary things in the community, except I think what Jay's doing is actually equally, if not more significant than what any politician has ever done because he puts black people first all the time, no matter what. So Jay called me up and, and we were talking on the phone and he said, uh, I, wanna, I wanna create this fund. And, and, uh, and so, you know, I'm not gonna lie, you know, I, I'd seen other fundraising efforts in the community that didn't quite meet the smell test, if you know what I'm talking about. I ain't saying no names, ain't talking about nobody's business. It's always positive. And, and, and I felt that that was a problem. It's a dangerous thing because trust is a real issue in our community. You know, we really don't trust each other. And it's kind of fascinating that we trust white people more than we trust each other because white people have been the ones that have been killing us and lynching us and raping us and castrating us, but, but we give them our trust, but we don't trust each other. It's kind of crazy. You know, just so you know, we all, we all a little bit crazy. At least I know I am. And so, uh, so when he told me about the fund, I just, you know, started asking questions. And, uh, you know, and my questions aren't easy questions. You know, my PhD is in finance. You know, I taught college students and stuff for a long time. So I asked some pretty detailed questions, some pretty tough questions, 
Jay answered them all. Boom, boom, boom. SEC approval. Boom, boom. Oh, we're going to set it up this way and do this. And, this. And, I, and, and I was listening and my instinct said, okay, he's really, really thought this through. He's really laid this out. This is going to be nice. This infrastructure is solid. And I immediately gained faith in what Jay was doing. You know, I said, okay, you know what? I, I, I'll back you. Let me know what I can do. Let me know how I can help. And so I watched him, you know, really just he and Ernestine just do an amazing job on the promotion. Uh, I, I was really impressed with everything. Uh, there, there wasn't, I mean, there, there is the flash, but a lot, and a lot of people have flash, but there was the substance beneath the flash, and that's the perfect combination when you have both. And so people were excited about it. It gave us something to rally around, something to galvanize people in ways that we're not used to seeing. And uh, I was one of the initial investors. Uh, I stepped right up and wrote my check and sent it in, and, and, and I said, I'm, I'm in this. And we talked about it, and I supported it. People asked me about it, and I always, whenever they ask me about it, I always tell them the same thing. I, I do believe in the Tulsa Fund, because here's the interesting thing. You know, I, I hear everything, right? I hear, uh, you know, those who are enthusiastic, and then I hear those who are highly skeptical. And I understand the skepticism, right? You know, we have people that do things they shouldn't be doing, but I find it fascinating, though, that we can be 10 times more skeptical when it comes to each other than we are when it comes to investing with these other people out here that you know don't care nothing about you, right? Like I teach my students all the time about investing in the stock market. I believe stock market investing is the key to building wealth. So we do that all the time. So most of my students are invested in the stock market. And I say, why is it that you never ask me the same questions about investing in Apple and IBM and all these other companies that you're asking me about investing in the Tulsa real estate fund? I mean, the brother, you know, they went out and they got SEC approval. They have, you know, dotted the I's and crossed the T's. And so I don't understand why you have the additional scrutiny, additional skepticism. So when I think about why I invested in this fund, uh, my question would, that question coming to me would actually get another question in return, which is, you know, why not invest your money with this fund? Why not? Every smart person in this room and in our community is investing money in something. You should be investing in something. So why wouldn't you? jump to want to invest in this fund? Why wouldn't you want to participate? Now let's just be real, investing is not always for the faint of heart. So, some, some investments go great, some don't go so great. That's the nature of investing. But it's important to understand all of this because I do not want it to be the case that if one or two investments doesn't work out the way we expect it to, that suddenly people say, oh, well, see, I told you. That's why you don't invest with these Negroes. Because I'm going to tell you like this. When you look at most of these big white companies that are out here and they invest in 20 projects, 10 of them might go bad, 10 of them are going to go good, and you just aim to make sure that the good outweighs the bad. Right? And I think that's very important to understand because we do not want to allow anybody to lose faith in what's being done here. This fund, I think, Jay, well, you're up to $15 million now. 12 million, 12 and some change, some change, right? This nice change. Well, you know, I, I, I kind of believe that 12 million should be 120 million. And that 120 million should eventually become 1.2 billion. Because I tell you what, when Disney came out and announced that they were making a movie with black people in it, we immediately gave them half a billion dollars that ain't coming back to our community. They're not going to buy Black Wall Street with their money. They're putting their money into their, their synagogues and, and whatever else that they do with the money. I don't even know what they do with the money because they don't bring it back to us. We know it ain't coming back to us. So at the end of the day, so at the end of the day, and I'm going to shut it down right now, and I apologize for, being, uh, for not being as brief as I'd like to be, but I'm a big mouth. My mama told me that when I was little. I believe in the fund. I believe in Mr. and Mrs. Morrison. Uh, I believe that this is just the beginning. Yes. This is just the beginning. I believe you ain't seen nothing yet. Nothing. And I am happy to invest my money. I will invest more money. And I can't wait to see all the great things that are done in the future. Together, we can do anything. God bless everybody.